Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. In this short video, I'm just going to give a short Devo, uh, something that I was actually thinking about last night. Uh, it's just this verse that popped into my head, and I was like, wow, the life that God expects of us really is that simple. Like, you know, we can dive deep and figure out the things we should be engaging in and how to best do it and to bring God glory and to make him known. Um, but so often I think that we get life so mixed up in that we think that to live well is to do a million different things. And, you know, there are good things that we should be doing, but life itself is simple. And that's why I like Micah 6, 8 so much. And that's the verse that came up. I'm just going to read it to you guys, and then we'll just talk about it for a couple minutes. And hopefully it's just a, a good Devo for you today, something to think about. Uh, so the second half of the verse uh, says, And what does the Lord require of you but to act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. So these are the three things it says. Act justly and love mercy and walk humbly with your God. So first it says to act justly, you know, to do rightly, to do right, you know, to try to live according to God's standard. And again, this isn't coming from a place of pride, but from a place of grace. We could never live up to God's standard. That's why he sent Jesus to live the perfect life uh, to die on the cross for our sin and to rise again. He paid the price for our sin and brought us new life and relationship with himself. So when we try to live up this standard, it's not out of a sense of pride that we can make it or that we can live up to it. Instead, it's from a place of grace, knowing that we can't, but still wanting to live rightly. You know, we, we can live out of grace because Jesus is paid for our shortcomings. He's taken away our guilt. So we don't need to live in that guilt anymore or live thinking that we have to make it or he won't receive us. Instead, because he has received us, because of his love, we want to live in such a way that pleases him, which is why we want to live according to his standard. And we want to live rightly and act rightly towards the other people uh, that he has made. So that's the first third, to do justice, to act rightly. So that's, that's going to be the first part to hold on to. Act justly. Act rightly. Second, to love mercy, to love good. And this has to do with other people. You see, the first one has more to do with where we are coming from, um, from God to us. It's starting from that place of grace, right? Because he has grace towards us, isn't paid for our sin. We can then live this new life, pursuing his standard, not because we can make it, but because we have his grace, we want to please a loving father who's already received us. The next part is to love goodness, to love mercy. He has shown us mercy, so we ought to show mercy and goodness to other people. You know, how can we receive this love and mercy and forgiveness from the Lord, from God, but not show it to other people? And there's this story that Jesus tells. It's a parable. He says that there was this king, and this man owed this king a lot of money, but he couldn't pay for it. So he throws the man in prison and says, you know, until you pay it back, I'm not going to let you go. You're going to work until you can pay it back in full, and then I'll release you. But the man pleads with him to have mercy towards him, and the king does. He has mercy. He lets him go, and he pardons his debt fully. Now this man goes to one of his neighbors who owes him a little bit of money, maybe like $20, and the man, he says, I, I can't pay. Sorry, please just give me a little uh, more time, and I can do it. Have mercy towards me. And this man has no mercy, he says, no, I'm going to take you there. I'm going to have them throw you in prison until you can pay me back every last cent. Now, the king overhears about this. He's infuriated. He says, why didn't you not show this man mercy after the great mercy that I showed you? Now, in the same way, God has shown us great mercy by parting our debt, parting our sin, showing us mercy and love and grace, even though we didn't deserve it. And that's now where we live, we live in this new life where he shows us this grace. That's where we're starting from. In the same way, how can we not show the same mercy and grace towards other people? So love, mercy. We live in a broken world and people make mistakes. But we ought to love mercy because we've been shown much mercy. So do right. Love good. Love showing goodness to other people. We can show them God's love by showing the love that he showed us. So do right, love good, and then lastly, 
walk humbly with your God. That's the last part. Because, you know, the other two parts really don't make much sense apart from walking in relationship with, with God. In fact, we really can't do the other parts without walking in relationship with God. Because of what Jesus has done, we can have restored relationship with God. But ab- apart from him, we're still living in a broken world, and we ourselves are broken. And we can't live this new life apart from him. We need his forgiveness, and we need his work in our hearts. So walk humbly before your God. And that's to do with that humility. It has to do with recognizing how high God is above us, recognizes his holiness, that he is holy, he is good, he's greater than me. And that, you know, that opens up my eyes to see my own sin. In the same way, we live in a broken world, you know, we're still broken and we cannot live this new life apart from him. We need his forgiveness and we need his work in our lives, in our hearts. He's changing us and making us more like him. But to do that, we need to recognize that he is different from us, you know, we're not going to become different until we realize that he is different. He is what our eyes are set on. We become like what we're following and what we're looking at. So we need to look at him, see how he is holy. He's different. He's better. I have sin that needs to be solved and fixed, but he's already forgiven it. But I also need to follow him to become more like him. I need to be walking with him, which has to do with being in relationship with him, reading his word, praying regularly that's talking to god and letting him talk back to you surrendering my life regularly to him confessing my sin to him when it happens and surrendering and asking him to change my heart to make me more like him and to bring me closer into relationship with him to walk humbly with god means to recognize who he is how much greater than me he is my need for him and to walk in humility in all those ways. And also when talking about it with other people, knowing that I haven't made it, you know, I, I still have uh, more progress to make and the Lord still has more to do in my own heart. So walk humbly with him. So what, what were the three parts? It said to do right, to love good, and to walk with God. And that's again, me changing the words just to simplify it. I'm um, rather than just using the, the words he uses in the verses, which are um, to act justly, to love mercy and to walk humbly with our God. Um, but to do right, you know, and again, this is from a place of grace. It's not to live up to the standard because we can never do that. But knowing that he's already received us and out of affection and love for him, we want to live out in the way he wants us to. And then out of this mercy and grace that he showed us, we ought to love goodness and mercy in these other people. People are going to fail us and disappoint us regularly. But we can show them God's love by showing them mercy and grace that they don't deserve but God has shown that to us and we can show that to other people. So we ought to love that and do that. And then ultimately all these things come from walking humbly with God, having your eyes set on him, following after him and walking with him regularly. So yes, life is complicated. There are a lot of things we're expected to do. You know, he wants us to make him known. He wants us to make disciples. He wants us to be involved in church. He wants us to be involved in our family. There are lots of good things to do. Um, And those are things that we should look into and pursue. But even amidst the the how complicated and hard life can be sometimes, it also is remarkably simple. We need to be walking with God, walking closer with him, letting him speak into our lives and change our lives, uh, living in the way that he expects us to, recognizing there is grace, and also showing that grace to other people. That's how you can be living your life on a daily basis. So how can you do that today? How can you make that a part of your daily rhythm, doing good? How can you make that a part of your daily rhythm? Do right, love good, and walk humbly with God. I hope that gives you something good to think about. Uh, I hope you're able to decide how you can work that into uh, your daily schedule, into your weekly rhythm, so that this can be the life that you live. And this is what you will bring into all those other spaces of reaching the nations um, with the gospel, of making disciples, of being a part of your local church, of pouring into your family, of leading your marriage well, of raising your children right. All these areas will be impacted by these three principles. Act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God. If you found this video helpful, then please share it with someone that you think might benefit of it. Like the video and um, and subscribe down below for more content just like this. I'll see you guys soon.